I'm here to call. Now, how long have you been supplying me with vittles and things on tick? Well, sir, you know what? Every cent I owe you, you're going to be paid double. <laughs> so you think you really found it this time, huh, Wiley? <laughs> I know it. Why, you know, if I didn't have to come to you for supplies and things, I'd be tapped into that mountain of gold right now. Well... Isn't that right, Jenny? Good luck, Wiley. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, you want something, Lud? No, just looking. That's what you had in mind. Now you... Hey, stop that, boy! Stop that! Stop that, thief! Boy, you... You go back here, big boy! I'm gonna... Gotcha. Uh -huh. Gotcha. He stole something. And it ain't the first time, neither. Uh, the potato, Carl? He's walking off with half my store. Yeah. I'm taking you to the sheriff, Now, honey. wait a minute, Carl. I don't think this is a matter for the sheriff. Why don't you just leave him with me and I'll take him home to his mother? And you can put these on my bill. I don't need anyone standing up for me. What do you say, Carl? Well, all right, Heath. But you tell his ma, if he ever takes anything out of my store again, he's going to jail. All right, Carl, all right. Well, as long as this grub's paid for, we may as well take it along. Let's go. You ain't taking me anywhere. I'm taking you to your mother's. Now, you can go the easy way or you can go the hard way. Chucky, Cecilia. Where's your mother? Where's your brother and sis? Well, I guess wherever she went, she took Chucky and Cecilia with her. Guess we may as well go. Now, Lud, you're staying with me until I talk to your mother. Now, come on. Don't go! We're here, too! Don't go! Chucky! I told you to stay put! You were gonna leave us! Chucky, where's your mother? She was... Shut up! Where'd she go? Don't tell him nothing. How many days has your mother been gone? Shut up! I didn't say nothing. Ten days, Chucky? More than that. I mean, I ain't got enough fingers. Where did she go? Chucky. I can't tell him that, because I don't know. Lud knows. Ma talked to him before she went away. Oh, I'm hungry. Well, I bet you are, sweetheart. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to take you all home with me. How would you like a nice, tall glass of milk with some bacon and eggs? I like ham better. Well, then ham it is. With hot cake? A stack of them, oozing with melted butter and hot maple syrup. Tell him you don't want any. It'd probably poison you if you took it anyway. Oh, I'm hungry, Lud. Well, Lud's big enough to take care of himself. But you two gotta have somebody look after you, see that you get fed. Come along. You come too, Lud. You got to. You promised you wouldn't leave us. You promised Ma. You promised Ma.
Remember when you lived here, Chucky? Yeah, I was a little bitty kid then. You and Cecilia were born here. Bud too? Bud too? No, he was already born when your father came to work for us. What's the matter, lad? Why aren't you eating? Maybe he doesn't like ham and potato salad. Well, he's crazier than I am about ham and potato salad. Maybe he isn't hungry. He's hungrier than I am, too. He's been giving his share to Celia and me. Aren't you feeling well, lad? Audra, let's check on the children's rooms, hmm? I'll be back in a minute. You're eating. I'm hungry. Well, you don't have to eat it like you like it. But I do, lad. It's awful good. You should eat yours. I don't want nothing from these people. I can't understand why Muriel went away and left those children. Well, I can make a guess. We got tired of them and ditched them. Well, why wouldn't Lud tell us that? Probably too ashamed. No, Nick, no. Muriel was a good wife to Bud and a wonderful mother. No, if she went away, she had a very good reason. Heath. I see Chucky and Cecilia have finished eating. I got a tummy ache. Oh, I told you to poison you. Well, at least we know you can talk. All right, now it's time for your bath. <laughs> Not me. Me neither. Me neither. Well, they're awful feisty now that they got their bellies full. I'll bet you kids never took a bath in a bathtub that came all the way from St. Louis. St. Louis? Uh-huh. We don't need a bath. Me neither. Oh, come on. Looks like we got mutiny on our hands. Help, Lud! Help! Don't let me drown! Oh, I'm not going to drown you. I'm only going to get you back. Help. Come in, Lud. Or would you rather go as a six-year-old? Imagine finding night shirts with this one. Oh, I saved some of your things. <gasps> Okay. Darling, I'd love to let you play with it, but it's very precious to me and very valuable. Well, who's this handsome young man? It's Lud. I never would have recognized you. Come with me, Lud. Come on, Lud. Lud, I can't let you go to bed without eating. Yeah. Well, sure looks good to me. Now, I know you're hungry. Why won't you eat? Well, you're not hurting any of us when you refuse. But later on, when you're lying upstairs in bed, you're going to be very... Has he always acted like that? No. No, he used to like it here. At least he seemed to. You see, Nick gave Bud Akeley a job, and he and Muriel used to live in the cottage behind the corral. Before that, they had had a very hard time of it. But they were happy here, especially Lud. Well, what happened to Bud Akeley? Oh, he caught pneumonia around Christmas time two years ago and died four days later. Muriel wouldn't stay here. She said she wouldn't accept charity, so... They moved back to town, and she started in as a dressmaker. Well, maybe Lud takes after his ma. Nothing pinching him but his pride. No. No, it's uh, more than that. It, it's more like anger. And the trouble is, it, it hasn't even started to explode yet.
as clean as a pen. Well, Lud, I see they put you to work. Yeah, it was all his idea. Been working his head off since early this morning. Good. Glad to hear it. Can I, uh, see you boys outside of it? Huh? All right. Chucky says she told Lud. We could get him to talk. Come on, come on. Where are we going? Hush up. Get in. Get in. Get in. Don't you move. What's that? That's food. It's enough for three or four days. I've been taking it from the house a little bit at a time so it wouldn't be missed. Hush up. Why won't you tell us where we're going? Because you're a blabbermouth. You're a blabbermouth. Honest, I won't tell anybody. You don't need to know. You'll find out when we get there. Have a lot of trouble. Put the whip down. I said, put the whip down. <laughs> now, now, you put that whip down, boy, or I'm going to take it away from you. Now, Nick, let put the whip down. We got lost. We got losted. Well, now you've got found it. Where were you taking him, Led? Speak up, boy. Chucky. All right, now you take hold of that horse. We'll try to get that buggy around for you. Come on, boy, move. Move. Now your children get back over there. All right. OK, lad, up. Come on, over. I've tried to be patient with you. When you disobeyed me, I made allowances. But this I cannot overlook. You're not a little child like Chucky. You're almost a man. Supposing that buggy had overturned, supposing the children had been hurt. Now, you've got to promise me that if you decide to run away again, you won't take them with you. And I know if you give me your word, you'll keep it. Oh, Lord. Lud, we used to be such good friends. I, I, I felt as close to you as if you were one of my own sons. But something has happened. What is it? Uh, you look at me and you pay attention. You look at me. I want you to promise me that you... 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But don't, don't you see? I, I wouldn't get this angry if I didn't care. But if anything happened to those children, you'd never forgive yourself. You... something, Mother. Those children can't stay with us indefinitely, even if they wanted to. But their mother must be someplace. And until we find them, they, they, they have to stay here. See you next week. You know, with all the cars jabbering, I plum forgot them lamp wicks. Be right back. First one to hear the big news. <laughs> Me and Jenny, we just got down from the Tuolumne. We're on our way to the assay office with a great big sack full of ore. And this time, Heath, we hit him big, really big. Didn't we, Jenny? Yes, sir. You know, me and Jenny finally struck it rich. Rich, I tell you. I Heath, I got gold nuggets in there as big as your head. Yes, sir. Well, that's just fine, Wally. Just fine. Yes, sir. Jenny ain't never gonna have to carry a pack no more. No, sir. You hear that, Jenny? No more packs. And you know what? Tonight, you and me are gonna sleep in that livery stable. I don't care how much it costs. Excuse me, Wally. I gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> he don't believe me, Jenny. Nobody believes me. They all think I'm touched in the head. All right, move over. We'll drive him home. Howdy, George. Well, we finally hit it big. A real bonanza. Just you wait till you test out what I got in this year's sack. Where's it from this time? Same place I've been prospecting right along. Only this year I went deeper and tapped right into the old mother load. Sure, Wiley. <laughs> you don't believe me neither. Well, I ain't asking you to take my word for it, George. You see for yourself. All right, I'm pretty busy. I'll assay it as soon as I can. No, sirree, not this time. You let them others wait. You do mine right now. I'll come back later for your report. Your eyes are gonna bug out like on a crayfish. You're gonna pinch yourself black and blue to make sure you ain't dreaming. <laughs> and then you know what? You're gonna go running down the street yelling at everybody, Oh, Wiley struck it big! Yo! <laughs> I'm coming, Jenny Gill. Jenny Gill, where?
full house. How's that for luck? What have you got there? No, let her play, let her play. If you, uh, if you buy it from me, you can play her all you like. Oh? Uh -huh. How much? It's, uh, $15.80. Give you four bits for it. $15.80. I'll make it a dollar. No. Yahoo! <laughs> yes, sir! After all these years, me and Jenny struggle rich. Rich, I tell you. And this time we struck a real bonanza. <laughs> Say. Because I've got millions just waiting for me to dig it out of the ground. Millions. I... Say, that tune sure is a toe tickler. It makes a fella want to dance. It's a buyer. You can play her all the time, all you want. All I want is 1580. That's not a speck of dust out of your poke. Uh, Mr. Wiley? Uh, Mr. Wiley! Mr. Wiley, please, Mr. Wiley. I'll give you, I'll give you the, the music box for free, for nothing, if you'll make me a loan of $15.80. I promise to pay you back someday, I promise. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah, now give me that. <laughs> Hey, boy! Boy, how do you make this thing play? You, you forgot to show me! Boy! Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh! Sorry to trouble you this time of night. That's all right. Good evening, Sarah. Miss Barkley. Right. This uh, music box belonged to you? Yes, where did you get it? The Akeley kid's been staying with you? Yes. Lud Akeley's in serious trouble. Well, what'd he do, Sheriff? Steal something? A little more serious than that. That old prospector, Wiley Griffin, we found him lying dead in the street. His head been mashed in with a rock. That music box was lying beside him. You mean to tell me you think that Lud did that? Miss Barkley, I do. Not more than an hour ago, he was trying to sell your music box over at the saloon. Frank, are you sure of that? I've got four witnesses. They even remembered he wanted $15.80 for it. But that's impossible. Lud is upstairs in bed right now. Would you please ask Lud to come down? Well, yes, of course. Mother, I was just looking in on the children. I came down to tell you. Lud's gone. Any idea where I might start looking? No. Where's his mother? I'm afraid we don't know that either, Frank. I'm going to have to find him. Good night.
Jared, how much did the sheriff say Lud was asking for that music box? 1580. 1580. Now, that's strange. Why not, why not 15 or 20? Yesterday, while I was in the store, Lud disappeared for a while. Do you know where he was? The railroad depot. I wonder... I wonder if that's what it cost to get to where his mother is. Thank you, ma'am, and have a nice trip. Yes, sir. Well, I think you could help me solve a problem, if you would. Mm-hmm. Uh, suppose a person wanted to go somewhere, and uh, I don't know where, but to get there, it would cost him exactly uh, 1580. 1580? Well, suppose it was a, uh, this person was a boy, about 16. Only 16. Now, where could he go on, on $15.80? Let's see, let me see, let me see, 15 in fact. Uh, wait a minute. I do remember a boy coming here and asking how much it would cost to go to Elko, Nevada. Elko, Elko, Elko. Sure, Elko is 15, 80 exact. For Mrs. Akeley? Mrs. who? Mrs. Akeley. She said she'd be here. She said. Oh, you mean Muriel. Oh, you'll find her over at the Painted Lady. Where's that? The saloon. She works there. No, no, no. You must be thinking of someone else. My ma wouldn't work in no saloon. Your ma? Did you say your ma? Yes, Mrs. Akeley. She's a, a dressmaker. She's from Stockton. Oh. Um. Well, you might be. You might be right at that. This uh, Muriel who lives here, I don't think her last name is Akeley. See, I'm an old woman and I don't remember names too well now. You mean she isn't here? She said that she'd be here if we needed her. No, she's not here. I'm sorry. Chucky and see you all right. Why did you come here, Lud? Are they with Mrs. Barkley? Is she looking after them? Tell me, Lud. What do you care? Don't you talk to me like that. Lud, please. I didn't, I didn't mean to. Honey. Hey, kid. You're a little too young for her. Why don't you leave it to an old rooster like me? Come on, Muriel, let's dance. Please, I'm his mother. Well, let's send him home. No! Blood. You're not my ma. Honey.
No, she ain't here. Are you sure? I'm sure. Made the trip for nothing. Well, finding her can wait. It's lucky I caught up with you before the sheriff did. Blood, you're in a lot of trouble. The sheriff thinks you killed Wiley Griffin. They found Mother's music box beside Wiley's body. And there were several witnesses who said they saw you trying to sell it. So you must have dropped it. Well, what do you got to say, Lud? Lud, you were there. You must have seen something. Well, we got a little time before we get to Stockton. Now, you can be thinking of what you're going to tell the sheriff. Now, come on. Do you want us to believe that you did it? Do you want us to believe that you picked up that rock and you killed that helpless old man? That you sneaked up behind him and you bashed his head in until you were sure he'd die? Defend yourself, Lud. Now listen to me, boy. If you don't talk, you may hang. I'll be in the sheriff's office. Lud, I'm your friend. Now, if you won't think of yourself, think of Chucky and Cecilia. Think of how your mother would feel. My mother? Yes. It wouldn't matter one bit to her. She wouldn't stay awake for one second. Oh, love, that's not true. That's just not true. Don't tell me about my mother. I know my mother. She's a saloon girl, a cheap, painted, a saloon girl, that's all. Blood. Oh, honey. Oh. I do want to be alone. No, Miss Barkley, please stay. Please don't go. Lud, look at me. I heard about it in Elko. They say you killed a man. That isn't true, is it? I want to know, Lud. Son, if you're trying to hurt your mother, you can't do a bad job that I've done myself already. Oh, Lord. I did what I thought was best. It seemed the only way to leave you with Mrs. Barkley for a while. But you didn't do what I asked you to, Lord. He said he found you and Chucky and C. You're still living in the house. Why didn't you do what I asked you to? Why didn't you go to Mrs. Barkley like a... Tell her what I told you. I would have wrote you. Except him. I can't write. I told him to tell you that I'd... I'd be mighty obliged, because I was going away for a little while. If you was to take care of him and my young'uns for a little spell. Why didn't you take care of us? She ain't no more! He doesn't understand why you went away. Perhaps if you'll explain. Lord, I, I had to go. I had to go, honey. But he I had doesn't to go. know why. All he knows is that you weren't here when he needed you. I guess. I guess I thought when your pa was alive that. He was going to always be there for me to count on. 
He was a, a kind of blessing that we took for granted. And then one day he died. And I didn't know which way to turn. It's been two years now and longer since your pa died. And I'm alive. I'm alive. And I need a husband. I need a father for you young and somebody to help me raise you good and proper. But how? How? Is a body to meet anyone what with working all day and mending and sewing that children take care of? Besides, I would want a widow with three young ones in hell. That's why I decided to go back to Elko. Your pa was a good man. You didn't know this. But I met your pa working in that saloon in Elko. I thought if I went back there that I might meet somebody like him. But I soon found out that that wasn't no use. Wasn't nobody measured up to Bud. I would have come back right away. But I thought that he'd be better off with you. You're the one they needed, not me. Lot. They say you killed a man. That isn't true, is it? I didn't kill nobody, Ma. Then why don't you talk? If you didn't kill him, you have nothing to be afraid of. Tell us what happened, Lud. You saw him there? You saw Wiley? I knew you were in Elko, Ma. And I needed some money to get there. So... I stole Mrs. Barkley's music box, and I sold it to Wiley. But in the street. And that's the last time I saw him. He was drunk, but he was fine. And you have no idea who killed him? No, ma'am. I only know that it wasn't me. Let's say he saw him. No. We're no better off than we were before. He doesn't have any idea who might have done it either. The way O'Wiley was splashing that gold list around, it could have been anybody. All the same, Lud could hang for it if the guilty party can't be found. But you know, Jared, whoever killed Wiley wasn't after that gold. They wanted him dead. Who'd want to kill that old man anyway? It doesn't make any sense. You're right. Heath. You said when you saw Wiley, he was on his way to the assay office. That's what he said? Well, now suppose, just suppose, that for once he was right, that he had struck it rich. <laughs> Griffin brought some ore in here the other day, didn't he? That's right. He was in a big hurry. <laughs> Wanted me to do the test right then and there. Jad was just saying, wouldn't it be funny if after all these years he really did make a strike? Make Jenny a mighty rich donkey. <laughs> anyway, did you run a test on him? Well, he said he was coming in later that night, so I hurried up and did the test. But he didn't come. I guess he was on his way here when it happened. Yeah. Too bad. He was a nice old man. I guess that kid took his talk serious about his being rich, huh? Yeah, well, uh, did you make out a report? About the assay? I sure did. You mind if we take a look at it? Not at all. Uh, I have to, uh, keep a report on every assay, no matter what the result. It's, um, government regulation, you know. Yeah, they're pretty strict about that. 100% pure rock. Just like all the other samples that old Wiley brought in. Oh, his hopes were big. But his luck was so bad, 
I never charged him. I just went ahead and made the tests and told him the bad news. Funny thing, though, he never believed me. Always claimed that I uh, made a mistake. Well, he always went away peaceable, though, even if I couldn't convince him. Well, thanks for your trouble, George. Oh, no trouble at all. Glad to oblige. Well, see you, George. <coughs> Say, didn't that sound like Jenny, Wiley's old donkey? Huh? Yeah, sole survivor to a sack full of rocks. What do you say we buy her and turn her out to pasture? What do you mean? Establish a foundation for bereaved donkeys? Well, why not? Well, I guess that's the least we could do for old Wiley. Let's go. Looks like you're going to spend your last days in Clover after all. Why not, here? Let's take a look at you. <laughs> well, come on, Jenny. Kind of stubborn, isn't she? I wonder how old Wiley got her to move. Seems to me he always had a handful of sugar. Kept it in these packs here. I see if there's any left. Yeah, let's appeal to a sweet tooth, see if we can make friends. Well, what do you know? Here's a piece of old Wiley's bonanza. Yeah? What's the matter? What do you make of that? A lot heavier than it looks, isn't it? Looks like tellurium. It sure does. Look how it's all seeded in here, like mustard. And Jared, I think it's gold. Oh, George. Sorry to bother you again. I was just wondering about that ore that Wiley brought in the other day. Did he say where he dug it up? Not that I recollect. Well, you know, the night that uh, the night before Wiley was killed, I was talking to him, and he told me he'd been up on the Tuolumne. Well, that's a long river. Could be almost any place. Why do you ask? <laughs> well, you know how Wiley was always uh, crowing about how he'd struck it rich. Yeah, well, that was just talk nobody believed in. Oh, I know, but I got some old kind of fool notion that... You know, just suppose that he had uh, tapped into that mother load. There must be millions of dollars worth of gold up there somewhere. And I thought if I could just locate his diggings, I'd just kind of poke around a little bit. Well, you'd just be wasting your time. Well, maybe you're right. Ah, I forgot, George. I was just curious about this rock. What would you say that is? Well, it looks like just another piece of rock to me. Well, wouldn't you say it looked like tellurium? Lots of rock looks like tellurium. Yeah, but that yellow seated there in that crack, would you say that looked like gold? Yeah. Fool's gold, maybe. And we wouldn't really know until you ran a test on it. If you leave it here, I'll get to it as soon as I can. Well, I'd kind of like to get it done now. I, uh, I know you're busy, but uh, I'll be willing to pay extra. Well, whatever you say. Good. Say, uh, that sack of ore that uh, Wiley brought in, it should still be around here somewhere. Huh? It's over there on top of that pile. It's got a tag with his name on it. Mistake. I want the sack of ore that looks like that. Well, all he brought in was a rock. No, that's what he brought in. It fell out of his pack. George, I've worked in mines, and I've seen a lot of ore like that. And it should essay out to about 5% pure gold. Well, you killed him, didn't you? And you were going to let blood hang for it. And after a while, you were going to file on Wiley's claim. Drop it, George.
while they brought in a sack full that was practically pure gold. You must have made the mistake of telling him where the claim was. Somewhere up on the Tuolumne. Like George says, that's a long, long river. Could be almost anywhere. to thank you, Ma. Would you tell her for me that there just aren't words enough? I'll do that. But the next time you decide to leave town, don't send a message. Deliver it yourself. Might save a lot of trouble. Might save a lot of trouble. <laughs> well, there's one thing for sure, and you can count on this. I'll never leave my young'uns again. <laughs> If there's a man for my family, it'd have to be somebody right here in Stockton. Ma, I'm gonna try and get a job. Help you all I can. I think I can work at the grocery store. Well, now, that's a job for a boy, not a man. You know, one of our line writers quit this week. Uh, I was just thinking maybe you could uh, get Nick for the job. Well, you think he'd hire me? Well, uh, could be. If somebody put in a good word. <laughs> 